Yeah. I can't start one. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Take two. Hi, <laughs> everybody. As I said, I, I think I've probably met most of you. My name is Helen, and I am with the Cambridge Education Group. Um, but my specific focus, and I think as I've spoken to a lot of you before, is actually on Cats College. To a lesser extent, CSVPA, but Cats College is really the area that uh, is my key focus and the area that I'm wanting to emphasise today. The reason for that is that at the Cambridge Education Group we have a very large number of programmes. As you know, if you want to study one week of English or if you want to study a master's foundation or if you want to study a two-year A-level programme, we've got it all. And so what I'm wanting to do is just to remind you about the key points about Cats College, just to put it back to the front of your minds, um, give you a bit of an update on the uh, results and destinations of our students from last year, um, a little bit of an update on our facilities, um, and give you some statistics, because I know our Korean students love their statistics. So... Cats College, and what I'm just basically asking is why should you be putting Cats College in front of your students? Next slide, please. And this picture, in a way, kind of like speaks to itself for me. Um, historically, we've been around for 60 years. Um, our three locations, next slide, please. Um, Cambridge, Canterbury, and London, um, are not only historically well-known and important, but it's where they're located as well, um, and Cambridge is just 45 minutes from London, Canterbury down in the southeast, um, under an hour from London, and then of course we have our London College itself. So the locations speak very, very much for themselves, and I'll speak a little bit more in a moment about the specific destinations and what makes them special and what makes us and our destinations different from our competitors. So first of all, I'm going to have a look at Cats College in Cambridge. And um, for I'm sure some of you have actually been to Cambridge and been to our Cats College, um, and will know how well we are located in proximity to the university that we'll look at in a minute. The headmaster of, of, um, of Cambridge, um, Dr Savage, um, has been with us um, in CEG for the last 20 years. Um, he is a passionate educator. Um, he really takes a strong personal interest in his students, what they are studying and what their destinations are ultimately going to be. The facilities at Cats Cambridge are, are great. Um, we've got a lovely outdoor um, socialising area where the students of both CATS and CSPPA actually, actually get together. But it's the actual location of where the college is. Next. I need a stick to tap. I, 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 can somebody give me a stick so I can just tap him on the shoulder whenever I need a... What am I going to use? Okay, I'm going to use this. Okay, it's going to give it up. Okay. So... It's the actual location. You know, we're, we're right in the heart of historic Cambridge, right amongst Cambridge University. We've got the river <laughs> close, the famous river in Cambridge, the River Cam with its punts. We've got those, those iconic pictures of students punting down the river. One thing I've not tried, um, because I'm quite sure I would actually end up in the river, um, but it's something that uh, most of our students like to do, and if, if, if you do one day come on a fan trip to the UK, then you would be also going on a pump up the river. The actual location of the, came, of, of, of the actual college, as you can see again, I'm sorry about the words on the slide, it's kind of like the first letter of the name and everything is a little bit squiff, but I'm, I'm not sure what's, what's happened um, in, in the translation from my laptop to, to the IAE laptop. Um, but you can see where Cats College Cambridge is right up there, um, opposite St John's College, close to the King's College Chapel. Wonderfully historic area, 
Um, and the students love it. The students kind of thrive on it, and I think really feed off that whole academic um, atmosphere, feed off the history, and, and really get a strong motivation to go on to be successful. It's quite funny in a way, you'll see when we get to our destinations um, in a short while, um, our students don't apply to Oxford. Once they've actually studied in Cambridge, Cambridge is their Oxbridge choice. And we've had students going to Oxford a, a few years ago, but this year my, my two Oxbridge students um, both chose Cambridge over Oxford. Um, and I think it's just because it is just such a wonderful environment, a wonderfully, um, it's a great environment to study in. As you can see there again, just the college. Interestingly as well, if you have a look um, where the tick is at the moment, those two square blocks were initially where we were. Now, where the green um, surroundings are, that's where we've expanded to in the last three years. Um, not only have our colleges expanded, but our actual estate um, and the facilities that you have have expanded hugely as well. Right, moving on then to Cats College in London. I just want to give you a taste of these places, and I'm not going to spend too much time or too much detail. Again, location, incredibly important. We're based in Bloomsbury, right in the heart of academic London. The principal of Cats College London, um, Mark Love, um, who came to us from, um, from one, of, one of our um, competitors, somebody that you will know very, very well um, in Korea, and that is actually an Abbey College. Um, Mark came to us because he liked our vision, he felt that he could make a difference to our students, and from the 170 students who started um, with us in Cats College London last September, this year we have 300. Okay. The results as well from Cats College in London compare very, very favourably with the other centres, with the foundation, comparing very well with the Cats College Canterbury Foundation. And as you should know, Canterbury is where we started the foundation, and Canterbury is where the first university foundation program was run in the United Kingdom in 1985. As I said then again, the location of um, the college right opposite Bloomsbury um, Square Gardens, um, that is an actual view from one of the classrooms. I wouldn't I would not mind studying in a classroom that had a view like that. Um, it's, it's, it's tranquil, it's historic again, and our actual neighbours um, academically were next to um, the British Museum, LSE, UCL, SOAS, the University of London Senate, just off the square, just, as I say, right in the heart of academia, close to Lincoln Inns Fields, the actual heart of legal London, um, within the stone's throw of the city of London as well, um, but in an area that is safe, that is student-driven, that is historic, um, where your students can go and study knowing that the environment is one where they are going to not only be happy, but they are going to be safe. In the heart of central London, and the next one as well, please. I'm going to say Bloomsbury. There's RADA as well for those students who are interested in drama. Everybody should know who RADA is. UCL SOAS, British Museum. UAL, LSE, and there we are, right smack bang in the middle. Moving on there, finally, um, possibly one you, you know the best, um, Cats College in Canterbury. Um, we, we kind of like started calling it our foundation college. Um, I look at it as our college that is possibly the most like a boarding school type environment, and that is purely because of where the accommodation is. Um, like, similar to a boarding school, the accommodation is actually right at the college, apart from a couple of the other 18 blocks which are further away. Um, so the students can sort of like get up and have breakfast and be in the college all within about 25 metres um, distance. Um, Canterbury itself, the principal is Jonathan, um, Jonathan Ulmer, um, and he's got a string of academic qualifications. I know they're on the slide. I can't even go through them all because he's, he's highly qualified. He's also a boarding school inspector, which is very interesting for us because he gets to go and see how it actually is in the boarding schools. He goes to see what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and bring the best practice into what we do at Canterbury. And what you'll see then in a couple of minutes is how that actually converts into statistics. 
Because Canterbury itself then, um, it's uh, again a wonderful historic place, environment, the home of the of Canterbury Cathedral, um, Canterbury Cathedral obviously, um, the Archbishop of Canterbury is the head of the Church of England, um, and uh, historic um, and incredibly safe, and as you'll see on the next slide, actually the safest city the safest university city in Great Britain. Now there are many, 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 many surveys done. Yeah, anybody could be the safest is the safest that. For us, the safest university city. You've not only got your Cats College in Canterbury, you've also got um, Kent University, you've got Canterbury Christchurch University, um, and so for it to be the safest university city where students actually go and study for us is an actual key statistics. A statistic. Right, on the next, um, there the actual um, care and support. Quite interesting, and as I say, this is where we get the statistics from, from, from Jonathan. The oldest school in the UK, um, Keys in Canterbury, in their latest inspection, their boarding provision was graded as good. Okay, Cats College Canterbury, boarding provision, excellent. Okay. Now for us, that speaks volumes about what we provide, and how we actually care for and support our students. And remember, this is being inspected as a boarding school. Okay, so this isn't just being inspected as a college, an independent college, as a boarding school. Okay. Canterbury as, as well, a number of awards. If you, as you have a look on the, on the next, um, uh, the next slide there, it's, and, and this is what other people say about Canterbury. This is not what we say. I can stand here and I can tell you how wonderful Cats is. But I, don't like, I, don't like, I do because I think it is. But, but, this is what other people are saying about us. 2010 High School of the Year, 2011 Excellent Boarding, and no less than good in any other areas. 2012 Award of Excellence by the UK Independent Schools Association. And that, that is across the board. That is looking at teaching, it's looking at learning, it's looking at support, it's looking at welfare, it's looking at accommodation, it's looking at everything. The UK don't use that word excellence and excellent. They don't just throw it out easily. It's something you've got to earn. It's something that you have to work at, and it's something that we we will take great pride, great great pride in it. Right. I would say then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our results at Cats College and, and our success, basically, um, especially over the last um, last year. Apologies again for the words on that slide that have gone a bit on a bit skew with. Um, outstanding achievements then, 84% um, of our A-level students this last year achieved Russell Group offers. Now, as you know, Russell Group is, is it the top 24? I, can't, I can never remember it, so the, the top 24 universities in the UK. 75% um, of our foundation offers, remember this is university foundation, are from Times Top 30 universities. For those of you who know about the International Baccalaureate, our average point score um, this year was 32.5. Um, internationally, the average point score is about 30.2, 32.5. That's more than three A stars at A level. International Baccalaureate is still suffering from lack of recognition. People do not know what it is. And because people do not know what it is, they don't know how to promote it. I said when I probably first came to speak to you about a year, 18 months ago, that I thought that the International Baccalaureate was going to grow in popularity and was going to grow in recognition from the top universities. That is happening. Okay. Last year for medicine, now I think medicine and think, oh, A-level's got to be maths, chemistry, biology, physics. Last year, the students who did the International Baccalaureate, the students who did A-levels, the percentage of IB students who actually got into medical school was higher than the percentage of A-level students. So we're not talking numbers, we're talking percentage. But IB is being recognised now by the Cambridges, by the Oxfords, by the LSEs, by the Imperials, as producing students who are more all-round strong and capable than a student who's just done A-levels. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about the IB now. I know it's not a program that has any great, great recognition really in Korea. Um, but from international schools, etc., you might, you might just get um, an inquiry 
keep Cats College at the front of your mind for that, um, because our IB provision is going from strength to strength year on year. Our progression year on year is getting stronger and stronger, and um, I think I think it's a strong, fantastic program to really prepare students to go on to be successful at university. So our A-level results then, in a bit more detail, just looking at the actual subject, because it's all very well to say, well, yeah, percentage of our students got into those top universities, but what were our actual grades in those key subjects, in the maths, in the further maths, in the sciences, in the business areas? And what you can see here is, for maths and further maths, 73% of our students got A star A. For sciences, 71% got A star B. That is not easy. That is not easy. Modern foreign languages, okay, the French, the Spanish, I'm lost for other ones, Italian, etc. Okay, 80% got A star to B. Again, that is difficult. Remember, remember that we are all international students. Okay, we've got a very, very small percentage of UK students. So this is international students who are getting these grades for those modern foreign languages. And then, of course, the business studies, accounting, business studies, and economics. 71% of students um, achieved A star to B. Okay. This is now students who have studied my two year A level program. I'm going to talk about the fast track in a second. We'll just have a look now um, at the actual destinations um, from this year. I hope you can see that clearly on your, on your screen. Um, Overall, then, 47% of successful students A star to A, 84% of my A-level students with those Russell Group offers. Carmen, um, one of my Hong Kong students, great girl, very modest. When we found out she actually made her Cambridge offer, we phoned her because we were so excited in Hong Kong. So I phoned her and she answered the phone, hello. She was very calm, and I, if I'd been her, I would have been jumping around, right? But no, she was just then saying, well, they haven't confirmed my accommodation yet. <laughs> What's her in initial reaction? She was just taking it in her stride, as she has taken everything else in her stride during her studies. So four A stars Carmen achieved, and she's gone on to Cambridge to study natural sciences. Now, initially, interestingly, she wanted to study medicine, um, and she came on our medic program, which I'm sure you know about. Um, and I say to people as well, the medic program has two advantages. Number one, it helps prepare students to go on to good medical schools and train to be a doctor. But the second good thing, and this is exactly what Carmen has proven, is that it helps you to possibly realise that you don't want to be a medical doctor and that your actual science's strength is better focused on another area. And that's exactly what happened with Carmen. Okay. Natural Sciences at Cambridge University. Um, Elisa, is that Anisa? I can't remember. Um, Cambridge for Economics. Um, but as you can see, Cambridge, our LSEs, our Durham's, um, St Andrews, UCL, um, and, and Warwick. Now that is from, as I say, from our A-level programmes. As I said, you don't see Oxford there. Our students don't want to go to Oxford. They love Cambridge. I've got a couple of students this year who actually are wanting to go to Oxford, and that is because of their PPE, um, PPE specifically, which obviously Oxford is, is, is known as the strongest for. Thank you very much indeed. There we go. So, I mentioned briefly fast track A levels. As you will know, we offer A levels um, in three combinations six terms, which is the full two-year programme, five terms, which is for those students who possibly started the academic year this year in their home country and thought, oh, actually, I think I've made a mistake. I'm not doing the right subjects. I want to go and start A-levels in January. Well, yes, you can, because we offer January starts for A-levels, and you would then be doing it over five terms. Then for those students who are really highly, highly academically able and whose English equally importantly is at a high level, we do offer a three-term fast-track A-level. It's tough, it's hard, those students work exceptionally long hours, but this year, 45% of my students who were successful 
and I'll explain why we say that in a minute, achieved A star after A. That's nearly half. Doing fast track in full A levels in one year over three terms. 21% of them destined for times top 15. The reason why I say successful, what we do with some students is we're not 100% sure if they're really going to make it in fast track. We take them onto the fast track with a kind of like a condition and say, if we and you okay, decide, come December, when you've had a number of assessments and you've seen how you're doing, if we feel that you're not going to make it in the fast track programme, then we will convert you to the two-year programme. Okay? Um, and so that's why I said successful. That is the ones who successfully then went on to complete fast track because a number of them, probably about 25% actually of the fast track A-levels were converted to the two-year um, programme. Um, but they were happy to do it because they understood the reasoning. And by trying to do the fast track programme, they realised just exactly what was involved. So, oh, this is Anna Sol, yes, A-star, a, a, a A-C, obviously going on to, on to Queen Mary to study law. Fast track, A-star, A-C. Fast track and to get into Queen Mary for law again, an exceptional, exceptional result. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Just a little bit, sorry, that's a, a, my, my friend Carmen again. Um, the four A stars at UCL. She also had at uh, Cambridge, she also had offices at Imperial, UCL, Bristol, and Manchester. Obviously, if you had those offers, I think you would be choosing uh, Cambridge as well. I most certainly would. Not that I would ever get an offer from Cambridge. <laughs> right, um, so a few statistics, because as I said, yes, our, oh, we've got a little bit of a blue over there. Um, you know our Korean students and their parents love their statistics. So, still over 50 nationalities at our CATS colleges. Um, it varies from like between 52 and 54, um, typically. Um, so, what we find that helps the students to do is obviously they're going to learn English faster because they're not going to be sitting with students from their own nationality all of the time. What we do do, the next slide please, is we aim to cap any one nationality at 20%. You know, that is, that is hard um, because as you'll know, you, you are dealing with um, independent schools and colleges, you are dealing with boarding schools, um, you are wanting to recruit students to go and study at that school or that college. Um, and, and I want students to come and study with me. And it's really, really hard if there's one nationality um, where that number is creeping up and you think, well, hang on, I really don't want to upset the balance, but at the same time, you know you've got a target to hit. Okay? And it's a very, very difficult balance to get right. I think we do it particularly well. Um, I think that the way that we um, engage with the students in the different colleges to make sure that they mix um, in their tutorial groups, um, in the social activities that we have um, in the evenings and over the weekends. Um, I think that works particularly well. Um, there'll always be somebody who will turn around and say, oh, there are too many Chinese students, and there are too many Korean students, and there are too many this. There will be too many Russian students. There, there always will be. There always will be. But I feel that we're not doing a bad job on that front. Nobody could turn around and accuse us of being a Chinese college. Um, nobody could have turned around and accused us of being a Korean college. Um, yes, some nationalities have more, some countries have more people, okay, you know, it's just a matter of demographic, um, but it does work that way. So, but as I say, we do aim to cap at 20%, because I, I, I don't think it should be more than 20%, to be quite honest with you. Okay, right, small class sizes, 6 to 10 for the class, as I'm sure you've heard me say before, the average is 7.2. And I'm sure you've heard me say before, I don't know what point two of a student looks like. Maybe it's just a hand or an arm or whatever. So we just say between six and ten per class. As you can see from um, the actual classroom itself, that classroom is only geared to take six students. Okay. And the next laboratory shot as well, um, science at Cats College, small classes as well. The actual laboratories are set up so you can only have small groups. So you've got those six students and that one tutor, that one teacher, uh, makes a huge difference. And especially when students, as you know, are coming from a Korean school environment where the class sizes are big, where they're not encouraged to interact, not encouraged to ask questions, etc. 
in small class sizes really help the students to develop their confidence to come out of their shell and really engage not only with their teachers but with their fellow classmates. On then to the percentage, because sometimes um, students will ask me and parents will ask me, and the next slide as well, please. Yes, 36% of our teachers and tutors at Cats College are either Oxford or Cambridge graduates, and that's across all three. That doesn't, it's not just Cambridge or just Cambridge or just London. I don't know what the statistics are for each, but across Cats College, 36%. 36%, thank you, um, hold those degrees from the university, and that obviously is the University of Cambridge um, debating chamber, which as well is just over the road from Cats College in Cambridge. Uh, parents get reports twice termly, um, that is every half term. If, though, you do want to find out information about how your student is doing or how the parents call you and want to know how Johnny doing, how Susan is doing, no problem in us getting information updates at any time. Okay, that is what we are here for. That is why Brian and Olivia are based here in Seoul. That is why I am based out in the market. I am my colleagues. We are linking them with the, co with the actual colleges, with the senior tutors in London with the tutorial teams in Cambridge and in Canterbury to get that information. And likewise, if there is a problem, okay, to feed back to you, to feed back to the parents, to say, right, how are we going to resolve this situation? And you're never going to have a year that goes through smoothly without any problem at all. It would be unrealistic for anybody to claim that they can. When you're dealing with people, as you know, okay, when you're dealing with people, people are unpredictable. Um, and it's just how I feel that we deal with those situations that help us to, what well, helps set us apart from certainly some of our competitors. That next one, please, we can actually whiz through these ones quite, quite, quite quickly. So how do we do it? How do we get those actual statistics? Again, I'm sure you've heard me say this before. Um, I've spoken through the predictors that we use at the beginning. I've told you that your students will be tested, and every student is tested when they first get to the college. They'll have their maths tested, their English tested, their aptitude. So how well are they going to do based on how well they have done in the past? It's a Durham University devised system, and it helps us then to set clear targets for those students to feed back to the students what those targets are and then each report the student will get every half term will be measured against those targets okay so it's really led from those initial testing all the way through okay the student is measured against how well they have done And we make a promise then to the students when we've done the assessment, we have that contract of achievement, it's a joint promise of success, and we guarantee that that student is going to get into university. We say, you do what we want you to do. You attend all of your classes. If you hand in all of your homework, you attend all of the extra um, uh, workshops that you need to attend, we will get you a university place. What I say to students, is I said, look, I said, I need you to give me 100%. Okay, you give me 100%, I'll give you 110% back. So but you've got to be in your classes. If you're not in your classroom, I can't teach you. Okay? If you don't do your homework, I can't give you feedback. So if an agent or a parent calls me and says, oh, Susan's not working hard enough, the first thing I do is go onto the system and look. Oh, not handed in homework. Late on Monday. Skipped maths. I say, Shh. okay? Got to be there to be successful. And that is the whole part of this promise we make to the students. You, you give, give us that. We will give you more. That and more that. And that, that is what we promise to our students. We will help them with those students as well who... I'm sorry, I keep hoping you were desperate. Highly effective learning. Students learn in different ways. Okay, We don't all learn in the same way. I am not the sort of person who can sit in a classroom and have a teacher talking to me I can only take it in for five or ten minutes and then I'm asleep. Okay. I'm a visual learner. I need pictures. Okay. I need activities. I need presentations. That is how I learn. 
and different students learn in different ways. And the way that our classes are set up are to facilitate that. So there will be some lecture, 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 talk and talk. There will be group work. There will be presentations. There will also be sessions on study techniques to help you learn in a, in a more clever way. Okay, Help you use that in a bit more of a clever way. Not just reading, 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 taking it all in. Using mind maps for those visual learners to help you to recall. So that, that's what we do with all of our students, is, is come up with the learning plan and how they are going to improve their actual study skills. And for those ones who are possibly not doing so well, we've got the extra support in place. Students generally are having you know, test assessments every week. That, a, a teacher knows how those kids are doing in the class. They will know if somebody's not got something. They will know if somebody is falling behind. We have workshops, especially in maths and the sciences, especially maths and the sciences. We have weekly workshops where students can just drop in and it's to revisit what has been already studied during the week. And there's free and unlimited tuition for those who need it. And as I said, you give us 100%, you go to all those classes, you hand in all your homework, we'll give it all back to you. Okay, I'm not going to charge you for extra lessons. So, you know, we've got a job to do. If you come out of a classroom, and I've said this to you before as well, if you come out of a class and you do not understand exactly what was going on, we've not done our job properly. Okay. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Extra support spoken about. Um, of the specialist um, courses then, obviously, you know about the medic program. Um, students who wanting to go to Oxford and Cambridge, we've got... Um, Actual Oxbridge preparation, the mock interviews, seminars, specialist reading, um, with the medics preparation for the BMAT, the UK CAT exams, interview practice, interview, you know, mock interview after mock interview after mock interview, so that when your straight A grade student, who's a little bit shy, actually gets into that interview situation, that they are going to be able to shine, and they are going to be able to put themselves in a cross, across in a way that is going to get them that place at that top university. And it's about developing the whole individual. You know, this is all the academic stuff. Um, but on the next, um, next, oh, sorry, university support first. Can we go to the next slide first and then come back to that? Yeah, yeah, developing the whole student. So we've got the academic side, but we've also then got, yeah, it's not just about academics. And when you apply to university, your personal statement needs to say more than I get A star in maths. Okay? They want to know you've taken part in an Olympiad and how you did, how you interacted with your fellow competitors in the Olympiad. What are you doing when you're not in school? Okay, nobody is just a student. Nobody is just in their books. So it's helping by work experience, cultural evenings, students taking part in the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, the opportunity for drama, music, art and sports, just so that students can develop themselves outside of the classroom as well as inside the classroom. And then if we go back to the slide before, sorry, okay, because as I said then, that all is going to feed into that personal statement that you need to put together when you are applying to university. As you know, we have higher education teams in Cambridge, in Canterbury and in London. They are helping your students to put their UCAS applications in there, helping them to write their personal statements, to make sure that every single word in that personal statement is well used and not wasted. You've only got a limited number of words. You've got to make everyone count. Okay. All of the UCAS applications are done online now. Okay. We sit with each student and make sure that everything's going into the system is done right. Everything's prepared beforehand when it's actually input into the system, supporting, guiding, assisting to make sure it is done 100% right. I've got a video that unfortunately I can't show here, but it's just of our very successful um, university fair that we hold in Canterbury every year. This year we have 77 zero of the UK universities at our university fair, including every single one of the top 20. Oxford and Cambridge were there as well. We're very, very excited. We've got the video. It's going to get downloaded so you can have a look because we've got some interviews with the admissions staff. We just said what it was like meeting our CAT students, why they come to the university's fair every year, why the fair gets bigger every year. Um, 
And it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful opportunity for students to really meet, find out more, and, and help, helps to really inform their decision about where it is and what it is they're actually going to study. Can you get two slides on, please? The whole education, I mean, the whole uh, classroom side of it, you've got developing the individual. We at CATS invest as much in welfare, okay, as we do in the teaching. Because your students, when you're sitting with a student, when you're sitting with mum and dad, okay, mum and dad want to know that their son or daughter is going to be looked after, okay. And we have that full range of, I've spoken about the university team, um, nurse Ying is on student support in, in Cambridge, um, and the lady on the right, she's the nurse in Canterbury, I can't remember her name, sorry. Um, but nurses, welfare, so if you're feeling sick, you've got somebody to go and see. If you're feeling a bit down, you're feeling homesick, you've got somebody to go and see. Accommodation managers, activities managers, okay? So activities managers, so you're actually planning the additional stuff that you're going to be doing outside of the classroom. So important, so important. Keeping you safe, safe, keeping you busy, making sure that you're happy. Sorry, making sure your students are happy, more likely, okay? Then, briefly, you know we have our own accommodation. It's going to be the funniest video I've ever seen in the, in the presentation. Um, safe, secure accommodation. Um, close proximity to college. Close, I say to people, sometimes depending on how fast you walk. Okay. Um, in Cambridge, the furthest accommodation is 20 to 25 minutes walk away from the college. I had one student phone me and complain and he said it's 45. I said, I said, I walked behind you in Hong Kong. I said, and I saw how fast past you walked. I said, let's speed it up a little bit and see how fast, because he was walking really. Okay. It's about 20, 25 minutes. Exactly the same in Canterbury, Albert News, that over 18 accommodation as well, it was 20 to 25 minutes um, walk. Cambridge, because of the location where we are, we have many small residences and there are over 30, over 30 residences around the proximity, well, around, in, in a circle, around and about the college. In London, we have the one block, um, Piccadilly Court, can you go and see the next one, please? Piccadilly Court, um, and the next one, um, which is just one block for all of our students, which is two tube stops, two subway stops away from um, the actual campus. Um, I've heard complaints, some students say that um, it's not soundproof enough. Um, a couple of students have actually told me that it's a bit smelly outside. Um, and unfortunately, there's not a lot I can do about that. Um, student accommodation, generally, it's not going to be the best soundproof in the world. Um, but we do have a strong, a strict disciplinary and supervisory um, procedure in place to try and make sure that students are very mindful of their fellow students, don't play music loud, um, that uh, are, are respectful of others' privacy, etc., etc. Um, and generally, I think it works. Generally, I think it does, it does work pretty well. Um, it's modern at Piccadilly Court. Um, we're constantly refurbishing all of our accommodation. Um, and uh, I think in Canterbury, yeah, in Canterbury we're just building another one. Um, we, we opened one big accommodation block last year and there's another accommodation block um, being built again this year. So again, expanding, expanding, expanding. Next one, please. And the next one. Right, so just a quick recap. What can you study at college? At Pat's college? Um, and... Obviously, the full range of programmes, starting um, pre-programme, which is our one-year GCSE, um, A-levels, fast-track A-levels, International Baccalaureate, International Foundation, high school term, not so popular here, AEP weekly and AEP termly. This for your reference, basically the actual entry dates and the English language entry requirements at the different colleges. Then we go to the next um, slide, just what students can actually study from January. Um, I know it's late in the day uh, for Korean students, but you might, have, you might, in fact, we, yeah, we are, we are actually getting applications. Um, have some students who are looking for an academic program starting in January. 
yes, you can study A-levels starting in January, and yes, you can study University Foundation starting in January. I want to say something about the University Foundation. I'm conscious of time. I'm on a very strict term. I'm on a very strict schedule here. Our London Foundation campus is extremely popular. It's extremely popular because of the destinations, because it is London, and because of the tuition fee. The perception of cats is <gasps> cats is expensive. Okay. What I'd like you to do for me is to do a little experiment. I'd like you to take the Cats Canterbury Foundation tuition fee and add on the accommodation, remembering that the accommodation includes the food. Then I'd like you to look at the London Foundation campus tuition fee plus the accommodation, bearing in mind that that accommodation fee does not include food. And I want you to see how close those figures are. I think there's about £1,500 in it, okay, when you actually work it all out. Canterbury is less than an hour away from London. For students who've not studied in the UK before, who are possibly looking for that softer landing into the UK, not wanting to go straight into the London environment, but looking to go into a safe environment like Canterbury, please keep the Canterbury Foundation there as an option. Okay. Yes, the tuition fee is over 18000 but as I say, when you add in those living costs, that accommodation, it compares very, very well with the London Foundation campus. I'm not saying, I'm not saying don't send students to London Foundation campus. It's a fantastic programme as well and very, very popular for Korean students. But what I am asking you to do is just to keep that CATS Foundation in, okay, just to keep it there, that it is an alternative for those students whose, who's possibly their parents um, are a little bit worried about them going to London right at the beginning. Um, progression this year is absolutely fantastic. Um, again, we're at the Durham's, the Lancasters, the Warwick's, um, etc. Um, progression from the London Foundation campus though as well is excellent because again, we've had students going to UCL this year. It goes down and what I'm going to finish on saying now is what we always say, it's down to the individual student. Different students suit different environments, suit different programmes, and that is why when we meet the students, it's so important to find out a little bit more about what makes them tick, you know, what kind of personality they've got, what their long-term ambition is, what kind of environment they would feel comfortable in, what mum and dad actually want for them. Look at that individually. Are they a CAT student? Are they a Foundation Campus student? And, you know, when I interview students, I really, really do take that into consideration. Um, but in a number of um, interviews I've done this year where a student has gone for London Foundation Campus because they thought the fees, the money, 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 when we actually looked at it, they've gone for Canterbury. Okay. So that is all I am going to say for today. So Cats College, remember, part of the Cambridge Education Group. I'm sure I will see you again in a few months' time. Thank you. 33 people now. Thank you for listening. And um, I look forward to seeing you at, in January. Yes, in January. I'll be, I'll be back um, for WEF. So mm -hmm. I look forward to seeing you all then. Bye-bye. Can I go now? Yeah. Turn me off. <laughs>